But the Roland Rasmussen was way up there in years, and Tex Mars and Rosenthal were not pastors. So the, the baton falls on this idiot there in Arizona named Stephen Anderson. He's a pastor of Faithful Word Baptist Church. And he's got a church, so he's got a little more clout in the minds of people, I guess. But the guy's an, an airhead and a half. I mean, he, he made his big-time debut, you know, and as a Christian celebrity, getting on, uh, on CNN. They interviewed him, I guess. I don't know. I heard the, the statistics. I saw a report about it once. I don't know, 20-minute, half-hour interview. But his big deal then, they, were, they, they sucked him right in. He couldn't wait to get the publicity. What was it all about? You know, leading his, his congregation to pray that God would kill Obama. And you know, no matter how much you thought of that guy, didn't like him, I didn't like him, but you know what that New Testament says about that stuff with, evil, with dignitary. You don't do that stuff. And, then, and, and what this guy is, he's a Westboro Baptist Church kind of wannabe guy. He likes the crazy, uh, bizarre attention. But he's got followers coming out of his ears. Now, and it's almost a package, you know, it's almost a package plan. It's, uh, it's, uh, the main thing is this replacement theology that the church has replaced Israel. With all the promises for the land, God dumped the Jew and gave those promises over to the church. And they go into everything else. They fight the pre-tribulation rapture. They fight repentance. Paul said, I preach repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul never got Stephen Anderson's material either. And so he didn't know he shouldn't preach repentance. You go on, the web, you go on his nuts website, he's got two lists, preacher, uh, of, pastor, of preachers that are on his you know, uh, ban list heretic list, or I don't know what he calls it, for preaching about preaching repentance. And he's got two lists. He's got big-time preachers and little preachers, or regular preachers. I am on the big list, I think three names below Spurgeon. I always wanted to be on a list like that. Okay, I mean, what a nut. And, uh, and uh, what else is he preaching about? Now he put out a new video on... Um, he put a new video out on, um, on the, the, the great whore, you know, Revelation 17. 99% of the Christians through history, Protestant and Baptist alike, have identified the great whore with Rome. No time to go into all that. You ought to know that. Seven hills and, and all the rest of that, purple garments and, you know, a woman. Oh, no, no need to go into all that. And, and you know what? He comes out with a new video identifying the great whore as the United States. Drunk with the blood of the martyrs? This is the only country in the world that's never had any religious executions. What are you, out of your mind? Catholic Church has been killed millions through the years. And, but anyway, and, and then he also preaches Holocaust denial. My, my, my daughter's a pastor's wife. She called me the other day and said, Dad, I just saw this crazy video on television, I mean on the Internet, about uh, Holocaust denial from... Uh, uh, Stephen Anderson, what's this all about? I watched the thing. Oh, you couldn't have all those people killed in Auschwitz. And uh, ask, he, he's, he's, I listened to watch it. You got to call, call your local mortuary and find out how long it takes to cremate a body. You couldn't have had enough time to cremate all those bodies, all those victims. Hey, listen, this junk is spreading in everybody's church, the best churches in America. My son-in-law, my son-in-law pastors down in Florida. He took, his, he took my diabetic, uh, type A diabetic teenage grandson down to uh, South America to a missions conference down there or to a mission, a mission revival down there and in Guyana. And uh, he came back on a, uh, he got back on a Friday night and he called me on Saturday afternoon and said, Dad, who is this Stephen Anderson nut? I've got two families in my church overnight that are, are being influenced by the junk over the Internet and I have to deal with this stuff. I have to give them a whole rundown of that thing. The best churches I've been in in this country since April are having problems, all of them. Listen, I'm at that book table over there. It's like the last plane out of Vietnam, the last helicopter out of Vietnam. Everybody knocking book people over and killing each other to get books. I haven't been treated this good in a million years. But I had some guy this morning, probably a visitor. Oh, uh, I heard that message this morning about the Holocaust. You know, I don't know about that. I don't think you could execute 800 people a day. Some might fit. Those numbers are a little fishy, you know. I said, I, I, I said, I spent 18,000 hours writing a book about this stuff. You think I'm going to change it for you? <laughs> Hit the stinking road, pal. Hey. I ain't got time for that stuff. Every church in America is getting these people in there. And keep your eyes open. The man of God down here can't keep, you know, kill everything that moves. You've got to help them out here. Hey. And keep, that, keep your eyes. That's why, that's why I'd mention something like this, you know. And uh, blah, blah, blah. It was this guy right here in the end. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm a telling you, neighbor, 
this is very, very big. Now watch. So you got two groups over here. So you got this group over here, and over here you've got the traditional group, the, the Christians that uh, are, uh, have a warm spot for Israel, understand the mind of God about the matter, and, and are not death on the Jews. Now watch. Now there's two groups. This group over here, they can't wait to show you. And by the way, oh, so all Israel shall be saved. Remember the verse we just read? I had, some, I had a conversation with some nut pastoring in Illinois on the telephone. He's trying to convert me over to this position. Pre preacher, I'm trying to get into Jimmy John's over there to get a turkey sub, and he's got me tied up in the parking lot. And I'm going, trying to give him, it's like arguing with a Jehovah's Witness, giving him every thought, verse I can give him. And finally I said, look, man, nothing personal, but can't you read? And so all Israel shall be saved. Now listen, you folks out here that could be spoiled, could be spoiled, you might have a good church here and you, you're spoiled and don't know how good you have it. How would you like to be in this guy's congregation in Illinois? You know what that guy said to me? He said, oh, I believe that verse. So all Israel shall be saved. I believe that, he said. Ready? We're Israel. That's the message now. Spiritual Israelites. That's what you folks are. In other words, that right division breakdown in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 28, give none offense to the Jew, nor to the Gentile, nor to the church of God, that's been thrown out. There's no division anymore. We're Israel. The church is Israel. Israel doesn't exist anymore. Greg Dixon sent me an email one time and told me something he had read from Tex Mars. I, it was so crazy, Pastor, I couldn't accept, I didn't tell him this, but I wasn't going to put it in my book unless I could get it checked out. I, I don't know if I quoted that thing to you this morning. Uh, Peter Jennings used to say, if you hear a rumor, your mother loves you, check it out. I've got 3,000 footnotes in my book. I try to document everything I, I write. So I heard this quote. I said, there's no way it could be true. So I, wrote, I mailed away for a used copy of that book. It's about DNA, the Jews and DNA or something. The words DNA is in the title of the book. And I have it footnoted in my new book. But I looked at the quote preacher, and sure enough, there it was. And Tex Morris says, very pharisaically, I have a problem with any Christian who would dare to say that Jesus was ever a Jew or is a Jew at this time in heaven. Now, here's another problem. John, John the Beloved, he never got Tex Morris material because he called Jesus the Lion of the tribe of Judah in the book of Revelation. And, and even, and even Pilate and the Roman government knew who Jesus was. They put on his cross, king of the Jews. That's the kind of stupidity that we're dealing with. How do you debate somebody that whether water is wet or not? You know how many thousands of verses there are in the Bible about that Jew being restored to his land one day and the Lord coming back and ruling in Zion as the king of Israel? How are you kidding? How do you debate that? 